Isaiah chapter 53. All the chapters in the book of Isaiah that stand out that cause more uh, discussion and even I, I believe if my my memory is not as good as it should be, but I remember Brother Johnston, did, weren't you with a rabbi and talking about Isaiah 53? Was that you? And they will acknowledge he was a prophet. They will acknowledge he's a good man, but they will not accept the fact he was divine. Hmm? Isaiah chapter 53 is down Jesus. Ah. Jewish people, it's not Jesus as we say. Oh, okay. Yes, because it's part of the Messianic prophecies of Christ. Right. Right. Yeah, they can't handle that, so we'll have to adjust it to. You also remember that the Ethiopian eunuch was traveling toward home. And Philip was sent to him, and he too was reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 53. Is he talking about himself, or is he talking about some other man? So it is a powerful book, isn't it? It is a powerful book. Starting with verse 4 of Isaiah 53, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. We did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Isn't that great? He did that for us. All that he went through for us. Verse 6, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Our Father in heaven, again we bow with thankful hearts for the privilege of gathering in your house. The blessing that is ours to open your word. The principles that we find that rejoice our hearts. Lord, we ask your blessing on our service time together. The prayer request, Lord, for the sick. We ask for the guidance of the doctors and the healing. For those with spiritual needs, Lord, we ask, pray your spirit might work mightily. And our special prayer request, Lord, we just ask that you will guide and you will direct and you will give us wisdom to make the right choices. Watch over us now and use us, for it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. All we like sheep have gone astray. Turned everyone to his own way. The Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. Sheep. Sheep have the predisposition to wonder, don't they? They'll wander off fairly easily. Several times in Scripture, the New Testament, Jesus uses sheep to illustrate his relationship with his people. Let's begin in Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Starting with verse number 11 of Matthew chapter 18. For the Son of Man is come to seek Excuse me, for the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. How think ye, if a man had a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and go, goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which was lost, or excuse me, that which has gone astray? And if so, that uh, he, uh, if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine 
which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. We have a, a hymn in our red hymnal. The old, remember, the, I call it the old ABA hymnal. The 99. And the shepherd that would go after that one. Of course, the shepherd had a staff, which was the shepherd's hook. And then he also carried a rod, which was slightly longer than a ball bat and shaped about the same. And then with that shepherd's hook, he was able to reach down. If a sheep had fallen into a ditch, he was able to reach down and underneath the front leg and he would lift that sheep out. And he would come back and the Lord is telling him that he tells everyone, hey, rejoice for that one is found. The parable of the prodigal son is also one where he had, where the younger had gone astray. But when he came back, did not the father tell uh, everyone to rejoice? For that which was lost is found. That predisposition to wonder. That's why the shepherd had to be prepared to watch those sheep. There was the sheepfold, which was either round or square, about three foot, three and a half foot tall, and one door, and he would lead his sheep into the sheepfold, and then he would stay at the door and sleep, and that's where they spent the night for safety's sake. And no one could get in there except they through the door except they pass over the shepherd. Let's go to John chapter number 10. John chapter number 10 and Jesus speaks about or, or we have recorded about how Jesus talks about sheep in John chapter number 10. Sheep and sheepfolds were very familiar and common in the Bible lands. And even today, there are lots of sheep. And these animals were good for wool. Their, a lot of their clothing was wool. And it may, it may get warm during the day, but it can get pretty chilly at night. So those wool things were important. And these animals were there for they were service animals. They were not pets. I was explaining to someone not long ago, my daughter, middle daughter, has pets. Whatever the animal is, it's a pet. And she'll tend to it. She, we used to have lot we used to have some cats and they would find a stray and they'd take it to the vet and the vet said if it, if that animal has any chance at all, then Emily is that chance to spare its life. But sheep were service animals. They would be uh, sheared in the uh, spring after the winter. The wool would be taken. They would uh, use various ways to make, to make uh, yarn out of it and make clothing with it. And I mean, they were service animals. They were important. Goats were also in, available and they also were service animals. They had a purpose for being there. For the poor, if an animal could not provide its purpose, there's no reason to have it around. They did not have pets. They couldn't afford pets or to feed an animal that was not doing its due. Okay. In 10th chapter of John, Jesus begins by saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. And he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, 
and he calleth his own sheep by name, and he leadeth them out. Now, so, most of us have pets, right? Dog, cats. And each one has a name. Have you ever wondered if that animal knows its name? <laughs> well, as much as we fuss at them, you'd think they know their name, don't you? Okay. You remember I was raised on a dairy farm and we had over 45 head of cows on the line, which I call, that's, we were milking twice a day. Okay, and each one of those animals had a name. And they had their own temperament. Okay? And whenever a calf would be born, we would name that animal. And we knew its name. We kept track of all that. And I noticed one time I was watching this video of this farm. They had over 1,500 milk cows. And each one of those cows had a tag in its ear with a number. And that's how they were known. They were known by the number. Now you know our Lord has a lot of sheep, doesn't he? All around the world he's got a lot of sheep. And you know that he knows us by name. We're not just a number in the crowd, but we, he knows us by name. In fact, if we have hair to count, he even counts the hair on our heads, doesn't he? So he knows us by name. This shepherd called to his sheep. They knew his voice. He called them by name. Okay? We had this old cranky cow one time that caused all, you know, she was just, she was just disagreeable. Okay? When it came time to milk her, dad would tell me to get back out of the way because he was afraid she was going to kick and, she, and when, they, when she started kicking it could, you know, you could get hurt. It's bad enough when they step on you, you know, and my tennis shoes, and I'm, uh, but, uh, but we, and she had her name. We knew her name, and she, we knew that she was hateful and mean. Some of them were pleasant as they could be, okay? But, you know, the Lord knows us by name, okay? And, when the you know sheep have to be led, right? They're not driven like cows or other animals. They have to be led. So this shepherd would call, call out to his flock, and his flock would come out and follow him. Go down to verse 27, right? My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Okay. I, and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all and no one is able to pluck out of my Father's hand. I and Father are one. Amen. Right? So he knows those sheep by name and each one has its own personality. Now back over here yeah, to verse number uh, number 4 of chapter 10. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Amen. One time when we were watching the videos from the guy named Vanderland. Everybody remember Vanderland? Anyway, he had this crowd with him and they went out and they saw this flock following a shepherd and that shepherd was singing. Okay? And those sheep knew her voice. And they followed her. Now, there was not big big areas where there was grass but there might be a clump of grass here and a clump of grass there and so that sheep would go up and get that particular uh, clump of grass and get to another and so forth and that's why the shepherd kept moving in front of them okay to see that they got the proper amount of food and lead them to where there had to be what kind of water 
still water. Because sheep don't drink from running water. Okay? And, but they know him and he knows them. Okay, now let's go back uh, here in chapter number uh, chapter 10 down to verse number 5. And a stranger they will not follow but will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers. You know, there is a trust relationship that develops between the shepherd and his sheep. Okay? And that relationship means that a stranger calls, we don't know him. Now you've heard me say before, in a, in a valley there might be several flocks of sheep all grazing together, milling around together. But when one shepherd steps out and calls, his sheep will slowly begin to come out from the crowd and follow him. Because they know his voice. Okay? My dear ones, as Christian folk, we should know the voice of our shepherd, shouldn't we? And when he calls, when we're out in the, in the throes of this world, when he calls, should we not listen to his voice and follow? As he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. But sheep... Luke chapter number 15. Luke chapter number 15. Let's notice Luke's account of the sheep, starting with verse number 3. Well, let's back up. Let's start with verse 1 because it will connect it together. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners to hear him. All these bad people. These dirty people. Publicans and sinners. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. <laughs> you know, it's funny, isn't it? Pharisees and, uh, and scribes were so concerned about the outside, but the inside was rather dirty, wasn't it? And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth he not leave the ninety and nine in... Uh, in the wilderness and go after that which was lost until he find it. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders uh, rejoicing. And when he, uh, when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and his neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over the ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Isn't that great? When I was, when I was saved a few years ago, as I knelt beside my bed, the reality is that when I asked the Lord to forgive me of my sins, heaven began to sing and rejoice over that one. Okay? You've heard it said before that even if there's just one person saved at an event or at a revival or at camp or at, it's, you know, every year when I went to camp, I would, I, I, getting everything ready, getting the cars loaded, getting everybody together, and getting down there, and then get them in their cabins, and all this kind of stuff, by the end of the day, I was exhausted. And sometimes I'd reach a point where I would say, what am I doing Do all this work? But then the Lord would show me, because we would have one saved is not the one worth everything. And because of that one, heaven 
rejoices just for the one. It's pretty amazing, my, my beloved, pretty amazing. All right, Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64. He said, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. You know, when people decide to do what they think is best to do, it always ends up being a, pro a problem, isn't it? But everybody remembers this. Verse 6 of Isaiah 64. We are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. There are none that calleth upon thy name that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. Huh. When people wander off and do their own thing, when children of God, I am persuaded that children of God have a predisposition to wander or go astray. We have it in us. Okay? We rejoice because we know Christ is Savior, but then the devil likes to get a hold and get in that life and see if he can stir things and wander them away. Get them, get them away. Okay? And whenever that happens, gone to their own way, it's always a problem, isn't there? I've seen too many lives destroyed because of wandering off. If we turn away from the Lord and go our own way, we're headed for trouble. If we deny the principles of Scripture, we're headed for trouble. Absolutely. Okay, Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter number 7, and I go down to verse number 12. Well, let's, let's do, uh, well, actually, let's do... 13 and 14. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and narrow is the way. Excuse me, let's try that again. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. But call straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. I think the devil likes to capitalize on the fact of all that you're giving up if you become a Christian. Well, what exactly are you giving up? Right? What exactly are you giving up? But that's what we focus on. All right, the doctor says, I want you to go on a diet. And the first thing we think about is all the food that we can't have. And that's what we want. <laughs> okay? Because we have that disposition about us to want to go astray. Well, dear, heart, dear hearts, let's remember that there are many on this broad path. They like the comfort of the broad path. There's plenty of people going with them, but it leads to destruction, doesn't it? Lives that will be ruined. But this narrow path, it's narrow because the principles of Scripture are narrow. But if we're going to please Him who called us, then we have to agree that the narrow path is the best path. We do have to agree there, don't we? Romans chapter number 6. Romans chapter number 6. I wonder...
sometimes if we sometimes forget uh, you know the devil does not have any hold on us you know that right we make the choice we decide what we're going to do how we're going to do we can't be like the guy on TV that said the devil made me do it because we have that choice we have the sin nature yes is it a problem? Yes. But it's not something that will take hold of our lives unless we allow it to take hold. Verse 13, Yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those who are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Is the temptation to wonder there? Yes. But it's never, it never has a good end. Okay? Now in verse 16, if we yield ourselves, we give ourselves to things, there's going to be problems. If we don't follow what God has said. Okay? down to verse 22 but now being made free from sin and become servants of God ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord the wages of sin is death. Ephesians chapter number 2, we are told what we once were and what we are. You who were made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, Ephesians 2 and then verse 2, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, and it took God to intervene, didn't it? But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. You know, if the Lord had not intervened, we'd all be in a terrible, terrible place, wouldn't we? Okay? Even when, verse 5, even when you were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come we might show the exceeding riches of his grace and, the, and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For it is by grace that you're saved. Right? Through faith. And that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Not of works, as any man should boast. We once were without God, without spiritual life, without hope. But then God intervened and we found peace in Christ Jesus. So this stray, this, this sheep that wanders. Number one, I'm so grateful that the Lord is willing to come and find that one that is lost. Leave no one behind. Amen? Leave no one behind. But he comes and he finds and brings them back. Now, he's not going to force us. Now, the shepherd in those days, they would pick up the sheep, put it over its shoulder and bring it back. The Lord's not going to drag us into heaven, is He? He's going to, he simply invites us to come. But for that one who wanders off and finds his way back, it's because of Christ that he has his relationship restored. Number two, I'm grateful that He knows us by name. I know you. 
It was once said of Lawrence Welk that he could remember a name. Sometimes I can't remember breakfast, but he could remember a name. Someone went to see him and and he talked to them and then a year later they went back and he called them by name. And they were just so surprised. How many people has he seen and how surprised they, that, he, that they were that he remembered them by name. Well, you know, we have a God that knows our name. I know you. Okay? I know you. Number three, dear ones, he calls. He knows us by name and he calls. And what, what wonderful words. Follow me. Sheep have to be led. They cannot be driven. So follow me. And what a life change those disciples had when they decided to leave their occupation and follow him. We too how different our lives have been since we know because we know Jesus and because we serve him and we've made the choice to follow him let's be careful we can all go astray wander off okay and in so wandering we think we might have found something interesting, but it could be something that is not good. There's a plant that they used to make jelly called Queen Anne's Lace. Everybody know Queen Anne's Lace? It doesn't taste very good, by the way. I didn't care for it. But they make jelly out of it. But except for a few leaf difference it's hemlock okay there's not a lot of difference between those two plants so you have to know what you're looking for same thing with mushrooms everybody talks about going mushroom hunting and oh yeah oh, yummy and they are yummy okay guess Rob they are yummy don't you like mushrooms but there's a lot of kinds of mushrooms out there that will they're dangerous and harmful. You have to know what you're looking for. Because don't they look pretty close to the same? Slight differences? Okay? Well, the reason I'm saying this is because the world makes things look, tries to make things look just slightly different and okay, when in reality, it will hurt your spirit. Okay? It will hurt your spirit. And we have to be aware of these things. So as Brother Johnston says, let's give it the acid test. Let's open the Word of God and let's see what God has to say about this particular thing. And if it doesn't match in Scripture, we are not interested. That's how this system works. Okay. And I still like mushroom drops. Mushrooms and steak. Mm, boy, that's good stuff. All right, stand with me, please. <laughs>